Hey Justin and everybody. Wanted to do a, a quick edit on how to improve this shot, which is mostly uh, quite good. It's just um, editing will make it more expressive and clean it up a bit. Um, so I've opened it in Photoshop and um, one of the things, just looking at it, uh, I asked the question first and foremost, where's the focal point or what is the sort of central important place to look and generally it's towards the center but not necessarily always um, and in this case it's definitely this arch right here and this kind of um, window within underneath the uh, the portico here and then we ask the question what takes your eye away or what weakens the impact of that focal point and the answer is lighter areas than it, especially around the edges. Um, and so this sky peeking through here is, is a perfect example of let's get rid of that and crop that out. Um, so I have two things that I want to do. I want to slightly lighten this and I want to darken the outer edges in general, like I did on James's uh, edit. And also, uh, because we're looking upward a little bit, um, and this is architectural photography, do you see how the vertical lines are tilting inward here? Okay, so we can straighten that up as well. Uh, otherwise, we're pretty nicely lined up here with good symmetry. Um, so before I use the crop tool on it, I'm going to first straighten those lines and see where that gets us. So. Uh, th this is probably the most complicated technique, and it's really easy, uh, of all the editing techniques, which is first to select all. Control A is the, is the shortcut, but up here, select all. Oops. And then edit free transform right here, and the shortcut is Control T. And that gives us these handlebars, these little boxes that are um, we can stretch and move the picture. We can rotate the picture too. Um, if you come to the outside, you see this double-ended arrow. But what I want to do is come up to the top corner and hold down the Control key on a PC, Command key on a Mac, and notice how the double-ended arrow changed to a single white arrow. And if I click and drag that corner until the column is parallel to the edge of the frame, okay, and that straighten that right up. This is called keystoning when you are looking up at architectural elements and they skew inward like that. So I, the shape of this is keystone. Uh, you know, Pennsylvania is the keystone shape, and they use this symbol as their state logo. I click the check mark to set that and now I just have a little bit of cropping to do on this side um, probably both sides actually uh, because I want to keep the symmetry perfect so fifth tool down on the left is the crop tool and we click and drag in I'm going to drag right to the edge of the column right there. And it's so strange that it added some white that I have to crop out that normally doesn't happen, but OK. <clears throat> um, I'm seeing, though, that the width on the left is a little narrower than on the right. So I'm going to crop in a little more on the right here and get that symmetry perfect centering that in the picture like that. Oh, we can see a keystone in the top of this archway here. That's what keystones do. When you build an arch, you put in a form, you lay in your brick, and then you hold it all together with this shape keystone. All right, anyway. So I'm going to take the elliptical marquee tool, which is the second one, down, click and hold to reveal the elliptical marquee come to the center and I'm going to click and drag but hold down ALT and that will allow the <clears throat> uh, 
selection to grow from where I begin it in the center. And I want to invert this again like in James's video. <clears throat> and feather it. So select and mask in order to blend it in. You click select and mask in the options, then click feather. And blending it right down kind of a lot. Um, and now I'm going to darken it using Image Adjustment Brightness Contrast. Kind of like that, and I'll say OK. Deselect, so you can go Select, Deselect, or Control D is the shortcut. Next, let's bring in more light in here. So I'm going to, I could use the same marquee, elliptical marquee, and just pull an oval and not invert it, and select and mask to feather it. Right down and in like that. And then when I raise contrast and bring in light, I use levels. I'm showing you the history of all the things we've done here on the right. That's image adjustment levels or control L right here. <clears throat> and this is a histogram of all the tones or values in the shot from pure black on the left to white on the right. I'm going to dial in the light right up to the edge of the mountain here. And that's pretty good. I'm going to leave that alone. And Control D. So that's it. Let me show you the way it looked when we opened it. It was like this. And I'm pretty certain that Justin was looking at it this way when he thought to photograph this. So what the editing process does is really it helps you to realize your vision at the time you photographed it um, and helps solve some of the problems that cameras have uh, with uh, their optics and also it helps us to uh, see things more clearly after the fact, after you've taken the picture. Okay, so that's it. I'll see you on the blog.